Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can use the Dependency Manager Carthage to include third-party libraries or frameworks into our iOS projects. The example that we're going to use for that video is the Watson Developer Cloud iOS SDK, which as you can see here is Carthage compatible. But what is Carthage? Carthage is just like CocoaPods, a dependency manager, which means that it can download for you a third-party library, for example, and also download all of the dependencies that might exist. And Carthage also states the differences between Carthage and CocoaPods on their GitHub page. So let's just have a quick look through that. Um, so firstly, CocoaPods by default automatically creates and updates an Xcode workspace for your application on all your dependencies, which means as soon as you have created a pod file and installed all the dependencies using CocoaPods, you can no longer work with your Xcode project. You have to work with an Xcode workspace. And this is not the case, for example, with Carthage. Carthage, uh, Carthage, Carthage um, builds frameworks binaries um, using Xcode build, but leaves the responsibility of integrating them up to the user or us developers. And it also states here that Car CocoaPods approach is easier to use while Carthage is flexible and unintrusive. So we're going to have a look at Carthage right now and um, let's go really quickly through the steps of installing it to your machine if you haven't done uh, that already. So as you can see, it also states here how you can do that. And we're going to use the homebrew approach, which is pretty simple as soon as you have homebrew installed. So all you need to do is check out the homebrew website, brew.sh. And all you need to do to install Homebrew is copying this statement right here and paste it into your terminal. So I already did that, so I'm going to skip that step. And uh, what we have to do next is uh, going back to the Carthage GitHub page, and let's just have a quick look at how we can install that using Homebrew. And if um, you haven't done that and installed Carthage yet, then you first of all have to uh, enter the command brew update into your terminal, and then you have to add the command brew install Carthage. And that's actually it. And then we can use Carthage. And um, what we need to do and what we need to think about when using Carthage is always performing these three steps. So first of all, create a cart file. And we can do that simply by bringing up text edit, for example. And then we have to have a look at our Watson Developer Cloud iOS SDK. And most of the times you will get the uh, required file or the required line for your Carthage file or the cart file. So we all we need to do is copying that line of code and paste that into our cart file. And then I press Command Shift T to convert that into plain text. And then we're going to save that on the desktop. I'm going to call that um, cart file. And this is really important that you also call that cart file. And um, what we also need to make sure is if no extension is provided, use text. Uh, we make we uncheck that box to make sure that we don't have a text file right here. So I'm going to save that on my desktop, closing my um, text edit right here. And then I will minimize that window here, um, closing that down. And I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, and I'm going to call that folder, let's say Watson. And then I'm inserting that file, that cart file into my Watson folder and bringing up my terminal again. And all I need to do now is switching to that directory. So I'm switching to desktop and Watson. And then I only need to enter the command Carthage update. And as you can see, magical things are starting to happening right here. It says cloning iOS SDK. And then it takes some time to fetch all of the dependencies and downloading all of that. I'm going to allow that and always allow and also allow my firewall to do that. And as you can see, um, we're starting to generate some output here. And I'm going to fast forward that process because that can take quite some time um, depending on the framework or on the library that you're going to use. And now quite uh, magically, we're already done with the process of, of downloading all of and generating all of the frameworks. And I've already sorted those frameworks. Um, so by using 
the kind sort here, I can see all of the frameworks in one row uh, with all of the additional material and all of the additional information that we have also right here generated by Carthage. And we're now interested in the visual recognition framework for our example. And I'm going to bring up Xcode right now and let's see what we need to do. So uh, I'm creating a new project, doesn't matter what. I'm going to call it Carthage example and hitting next and create that on the desktop. And with that project created, I can actually close that terminal. And here's our Carthage example. And what I'd like to do is actually put my Carthage folder into my um, into my Xcode project folder. And once I started up the project again, I can simply go into my Carthage folder, into the build section, into iOS. And now for the visual recognition, we need both the visual recognition framework and the rest kit. And all I really need to do is drag and drop that to my embedded binaries. And I click finish and we're done. And now I can build my application, see if that works. As you can see, we have both frameworks right here. And I go into my view controller dot Swift file. And for example, I can import now visual recognition version three, build that again. And I would be able to use the visual recognition framework right now. So that's how simple it is to build those frameworks. But there is one thing you should do um, at latest when you release your app to the App Store or start building archives for beta testing or stuff like that, because there is a App Store submission bug um, which you have to solve by copying this little script um, to your Xcode file go into the build faces and click this little plus icon right here and create a new run script face. And we can have, we then have to insert that script right here. And what we also should do is adding our frameworks as input files right here. So we're starting with the first one uh, by also appending the correct folder structure, which is Carthage build iOS. And then we have the rest kit dot framework. And the second one we are using is again, Carthage build iOS, and then the visual recognition version three dot frame work. And with that, we are all set to also submit our application to the App Store. So that's how easy it is to take third party libraries, build the frameworks, add them to your project. And we're going to use that Watson framework or that uh, Watson SDK in one of the next videos. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.